good afternoon everyone. Uh, we are studying the, uh, the instruction course on electronic medical records. Uh, it's a important practice management tool which everybody needs to look at when we are looking at uh, changeover from medical records uh, which are the paper form to an electronic medical records and it's a very important thing for making it everything green and also for making it convenient to manage from wherever, wherever sources and we we'll go through, uh, we have, I have a Myself, Dr. Sudeep from Shekhanetraya, I uh, head the Department of Frontier Ophthalmology, uh, Senior Content Consultant, and I am uh, also heading the EMR Development and Implementation. And I have my co-instructors, co uh, Dr. Malay Verma, uh, is a private practitioner working at uh, Ranchi, is an optoplastic uh, uh, surgeon, and he had worked with me in uh, EMR Implementation and Development at Shekhanetraya. So we will have him talking about the uh, private practice, how and uh, we also have uh, Dr. Lau, uh, who is at VBI Foundation at Calcutta, and he will be talking at EMR for practice development. So we have a variety of things, and uh, we try to keep it very short and more interactive, so that uh, we have enough time to spend on uh, uh, looking at various challenges, how it could be implemented, and how we go about. So I'll start with the uh, basic introduction, looking at advantages, implementation challenges from from the basic perspective and also from the institutional perspective. So why do we need electronic medical records? The first thing that, uh, uh, before that, I have a financial disclosure to do. And uh, why do we need electronic medical records? We start treating patients in the era basically by opinion and our knowledge about how to handle cases. But in the current era, we all look at evidence-based medicine. And for evidence-based medicine, we need a lot of data for it. So if we go back and ask any ophthalmologist, excellent practitioner, ask him how you are managing it, he'll say, I know I has worked very well for this, but for reading the, the refractive lens exchange, based on my experience, this is what. But to really ask him, do you really have the data? He may not be having the data because most of the data is in this paper files, and you do not have analyzed unless until it has been done and published. So when you look at evidence-based medicine, we need a lot of data, and these data comes from various sources. We can have it from electronic medical records, insurance data, surveillance data, the tools available from various sources. All that will help in better workflow management, better business intelligence, better reporting, and also for a good data warehousing there, you can do a lot of analysis. So when you look at electronic medical records, it's one component of a paperless <coughs> hospital. So to have an electronic medical records, we need to have first the basic administrative software which runs through it with integration of all of them, which is the hospital management system where you have the patient's registration process, surgery scheduling, billing, pharmacy, optical stores and various other modules, HR modules and all that are linked up. So when the patient walks into you, you get registered and once he registered and the basic demographic data is captured, the patient, we generate a paper file. That's what happens in the normal clinic if we have only HMS. But if it is an EMR, the same patient goes into the clinic with, without any paper and the doctor or the optometrist who works up completely does everything on electronic capture. So the patient history, refraction, all the information what is related and even the drawings, uh, everything is done uh, electronically. And, uh, when the patient is at by surgery or investigations, he goes back again to the administration where he has to collect money for paying for this investigation. And now we are struck. When the patient goes into a different system where we have huge modalities of investigations in ophthalmology, take anything. And all these, so that once the patient goes there, he gets an investigation done. If it is linked into the system, uh, once the investigation is done, they get uploaded or switched into the electronic medical records and the whole data gets accumulated in, in the form of an electronic data. So I, as I go through, we'll just give you a complete demo of how all these gets integrated with an EMR. So I take a case scenario at Shankaritralia as a big institute where we wanted to have the best technology and we were the first to so we implement all the best technologies, whatever it's clinical, non-clinical version. So take an example at Shankaritralia, a busy MRD department, we have almost more than 2 million files over the last 35 years. And every day we get more than 1,200 patients of which 500 of them are new and more than 100 surgeries. Imagine how much space we need to handle these kind of 
made a huge amount of space and manpower to pull the files and most so we started developing initially when it is all paper so we need to have some system how to track these files where these files are so we developed a small tracking system so if a patient comes in so i know this file is in this room so based on, based on these we can identify so this is how we started first but once we have so much of files handling getting the files ready when the patient is available become very difficult so next challenge we have multiple centers comes and we have investigation the equipment cannot be duplicated in all the clinics so when the patient comes in he may have to go to the other centers to get the investigation and we need not come and if a patient gets operated in one center gets a follow up in other center imagine he comes to shankaranagar or yamuna and he can uh, uh, goes to calcutta for follow up if a patient is coming from uh, from west bengal so he need not come for a glass appointment for it so when the patient goes there he, if the record is not available it's very difficult to handle them what has happened to him what why the patient has come under somebody has to so we have to scan it upload it or fax it or email it and which all becomes very complicated so with emr all these could be accessed in no no time so like your yahoo mail you can access this record in no time at any center anywhere in india or abroad so that's the beauty of accessing the record in no time so we also need data for various things the huge data which is untapped so we want to improve your practice we want to develop new centers why patient comes what level of the disease the patient comes or uh, what for the patient comes for specifically for particular specialty so we want to develop a new specialty we need all these data is untapped if it is in a paper file but when you have them in electronic format you can use them for various analysis we can discuss it later i can quote you some examples for measuring the quality of care how is the outcomes of your surgeries It, it could be outcomes of your medical treatment, or if uh, various modalities can be analyzed. For looking at, when uh, if it is a research-based institute, we need lot of patients for clinical trials, getting them for various cohort studies, case control, or even a case series. All that could be accessed and get in no time. And importantly, file auditing for better quality control. How the patients are doing across the departments. We need to do a day-to-day -day audit to identify the errors. So. the main question everybody wants it does it reduces the cost and saves the time yes if you initially look at the huge amount of cost involved with hardware software upgrade uh, technical support but all these are uh, in little, little initial capital investment but you see the return on investment is the highest there was a paper which was published and uh, in one of the peer review journal who looked at the return on investment in any industry and they found that electronic medical records has the highest return of investment and that is it's not less than even 5 to 10 years it happens within 2 years you can get back all that so we can take some examples and look and see how this happens you can look at if you save the cost with paper cost of pulling records employees could be reduced in your medical records department transportation of files from one center to other <coughs> prescription cost then medical transcription like your patient case summaries you need to dictate somebody has to uh, type it and give it to the patient the entire process could be simplified and it could done in no time and if you look at the cost benefit analysis i just took some examples where if we have to invest for each file it would cost about 20 rupees for the complete paper file with the folder everything if it is electronic you that 20 rupees get saved so in the initial process we just look within 2 years we could generate almost 1 lakh 20000 files and this cost saved is almost 25 lakhs instantaneously so we just go one more step further and see whether we are gaining much more cost as i said the amount of space occupied by these medical records department is huge and if you look here the initial we had only 1000 square feet and it was increasing year by year so when we started implementing emr the space has completely stagnated stagnant and this was only for maintaining the old records so there was no increase in the space so we could get return on so the rent on extra space all that could be saved so we did put a value to the rent value the manpower transportation and we really got almost 69 lakhs could be saved immediately by implementing the emr so then we have one more big question is we do we save time so usually yes the time benefit occurs in accessing the record pulling the record time and locating the record for dictating referral letters prescriptions and all that but the initial small problem is change over takes a little bit uh, take some time because any change management is a, a tough task so people need to adapt to it but once they adapt the time save is very high so we want to to 
just really look and see whether this we are really saving time or does it take more time come from paper to uh, electronic records and does it reduce your patient waiting time. So we did a study to see, this was a paper published in uh, one of the peer reviewed journals where we looked at documentation with paper records versus documentation with EMR. So this is like a patient walks into the clinic, the entire optometrist workup which includes history taking, refraction, slit lamp examination, intraocular pressure measurements and orders for dilatation. The entire process is done by an optometrist and they also write it in paper. The same thing they do in EMR. So we want to randomize it and check how much is the time difference between the two. To really look into see this, we also did all the other adjustments for the study to make sure there is no bias into it and after doing that we found the time taken between the paper documentation and examination was 19 minutes whereas with EMR it was 18.6 minutes that means there was no difference with paper record documentation or with EMR so the main block everybody has is documentation in EMR takes huge amount of time and that's why we want to go with EMR so this is we wanted to prove it in a big institution where we could do that and it so if you look into the process as a paperless hospital, the patient comes to the main center or the registration counter where he, the, he pays for the uh, uh, appointment, gets registered, all his demographic data in, gets entered and the patient goes to an optometrist clinic where there is no paper, they enter the examination done, uh, they do the exam and enter the findings instantaneously and the patient goes to the consultant where he sees the file on the computer, finds the computer. Uh, uh, authorizes the findings what the optometrist has entered and he enters his findings adder, and plan of care and then disposes. So the entire process is so simple there is no transfer of file from one one uh, uh, examination room to the other examination room. Imagine if it is multiple flows, multiple departments, all that is very seamless. So how does a clinic with EMR looks like? So what we need is basically uh, initially we started with a tablet PC which was very difficult, very small, <coughs> they had most of them with the age group of Presby found it difficult to handle that, doing drawing was all difficult. So then we went with a desktop with a large monitors and with a writing pad which converted the entire functionality of a tablet on your desktop. So you can do a drawings, you can do all the entries and your pen acts like a tablet, uh, uh, with a drawing pad and the pen acts like your tablet. So that makes very simple work. So we just take you through some of the screens how it works through. It is just like a Yahoo mail or Google mail. We need to log in and we can also have a biometric login to authorize. It gives you a dashboard tells you how many appointments are scheduled, how many patients are there. If it is surgery related, it tells you the list of surgeries and by clicking you can open up any file. Imagine it is an OPD patient, you know how many patients are waiting. So straight away you look into the clinic, there are about 9 patients waiting and we also know where the patient is, which room, how much time, who has signed in, the time when he has registered and how much time is waiting, all that get captured. When the workup is done, the patient comes to be seamless where the, actually the consultant starts working up, examining the patient once it is over, it goes already to seamless. So we can see the entire flow of patients, how it is happening behind the clinic and it is all nice and uh, you don't need to ask your secretary how many patients are there, how many have not reported. It also tells you at the level if, there are, if you are following a scheduling system, it also tells you how many patients are not reported in your clinic. So you have 10 post-operative patients and they have not come for your clinic and you have to move to a different clinic for doing, for, uh, for continuing your clinic practice. Then if you have 10 patients who have not reported and you are going, that is a big problem. So you know exactly what is happening. Uh, this is called the time motion. Uh, think what is happening behind the clinic can also be seen. If it is a big institution, then the problem becomes multifold. But we have about 30 or 40 consultants in the department. Then where the patient is struck, nobody knows. If you have a manager who looks into the, all these things, you can have a good time motion uh, uh, MIL system which tells you which room, which patient, which uh, floor the patients are clogged. If the waiting time is more, somebody can go intervene and reduce that. So these kind of things help in better uh, uh, reducing your patient waiting time. Same way with the surgery schedule, you can address, advise about 20 surgeries and you don't know what happened to these patients. Did they go to the surgery scheduling center, did they get surgery done or they completed the surgeries. So you can get a good report what happened to them because these are very important for improving your revenue. Uh, 
in your clinic. So you advise 10 surgeries and the patient only two to operate. That means eight patients are going out, somebody is uh, uh, taking care of them or they are not come back to your clinic for various other reasons. If you know those numbers, this really improves your revenue, uh, uh, increase in your revenue. So how does the find in a EMR looks like? So I'll just give you an example to see how things are. So this is how a patient file looks like. It has the demographic data and on the left hand side, all the records, visits, the number of times the patient has come. On the right hand side, a detailed description of the summary of the patient. So if there are any, this patient came for a LASIK, he had a multiple lattice. So he got a treatment done for the lattice to a retina consultant and then he came for a LASIK clinic to go back to the surgery. So we had all the investigations, all are linked up, I can pull them in no time, see them. And so you can look at the continuity of records, so good it is. So when the patient underwent the surgery, so the details of the surgery all entered and then we can look at the outcome, so this also is fine. So we can look at the charts of multiple visits, how is the IOP over the period, how is the visual equity over the period. And when there are more visits, it's difficult to run through the entire file. I can even do a search, like a Java, a Google search and put a packing metric and gives me all the readings of packing metric over the period. So it's not only for one thing, I can do a multiple searches and then get. This makes looking at a file very simple. So if I have to miss anything, I can have something called alerts which can increase. Like if a pressure is high, it will automatically alerts you that the pressure is high and all that. So coming back to the drawing, so we had a big challenge because ours is more of a retina speciality which started by Dr. Badina. So most of it is people come for more of tertiary care for retina consultations, the opinions. So we thought it would be a big challenge to implement in our center, but it was proved in the other way. It was much more, the retina consultants were very comfortable with the drawing and they used to do beautiful drawings. Imagine this is a patient with a pedia and this patient, they have done the drawing and the patient goes for a laser surgery. So he need not waste his time again doing all these drawings when the patient comes for a laser. He just copies the previous drawing and does the laser marks. Same thing, if you have done a corneal ulcer patient comes next visit, I need not do the same drawing again. I just copy it and make a modification. Same, 99% of the retina consultants is the lattices or horseshoe tears. They are not going to change, it's going to remain the same. So it saves your time. The first time it may take a little time in documenting, but second time and third time is you are just copying the diagrams and it goes, the speed of disposing or documentation is increases much, much faster. Uh, so we also introduced something like Smartest, maybe I'm sorry for this here. Yeah. So people find it difficult to type, so we have something called Smartest. So like when a patient comes here, I put an action plan, I can have multiple uh, list of things where I can just keep adding things like, for example, the patient needs a cataract surgery whenever he is visually handicapped, pros and cons of cataract surgery has been explained, all that and just by click of a button you can add them up. So these things made very fast, so you get a uh, ready-made smart text incorporated into the system and then you modify a few sentences which is faster. Instead of typing one full paragraph on what is your ma line of management, things go faster. These kind of things make the documentation much faster. So any system makes it, unless it is simple, it is very difficult to get implemented. So we did a lot of automation, like you take an I iPhone or any Google phones where you can just give a call, say that, uh, by voice you can do all that because they have simplified the entire interface of usage. So unless we make the interface much useful for the consultant to have less time, it makes it uh, very user friendly, the adaptation is much faster. So like Java search, template based entries, so you can have a base like patient comes with cataract, I can just load the cataract findings in no time, just made a change if it is grading is different, just only change that particular thing but the entire documentation comes copying the previous finding, copying the drawings, generating a prescription. Most of them make mistakes and calculations with the uh, uh, ad and all that. So all that could be done. Even medical prescription, you can have a lot, huge number of templates and you can just apply them and make a small modification which makes it faster. And you can push this data to various other things like optical stores. So the person goes to the optical stores, they may not enter the data. So the data is already available, they can just click on and uh, just only put the, uh, the value for the glass uh, frames and they need not do a re data entry for the prescription. So same thing happened with the medical stores or IVL power calculations. So as I said, it, so the patient needs a case summary at the end of the visit. So this is what this medical transcription which takes huge amount of time. 
So now with the EMR, with the just click of a button, it generates a nice summary along with the drawings and all that and you can even just, you can see how a summary, I can even email this to a patient. So patient receives this on his mobile phones or his laptop and this is how he sees. And if there are any uh, uh, investigations are done, I can even pack them up into the same email and attach them. So if, like a topography is done, you can open up and these all you can just give it to the patient. In case he doesn't want it in email, you can just print it and give it to the patient immediately. So if, you can have them, like you can look here, the patient's printed or it is email. So depending on how the patient wants it summary, it makes it very comfortable and as the patient walks in, he can take the summary and it saves so much amount of time. So we can go one more step further, we can have something like a patient portal with access with secure lo uh, login to the patient with their passwords where they can access their entire record. You can regulate what you can give it to the patient. You can see the lab reports or his case summaries or investigation reports he can add. Not to give the entire record to him for various other medical legal reasons or for other things which we can discuss and that depends on but as a right, the patient has a right to view his record and use his record. So we need to, we have to go a step further and make this available <laughs> in the system. Uh, then when we come in with integration with stores and all the other things, when the patient comes in, like we have a huge amount of like 100 surgeries being performed with, across the centers like and we have a central stores, we have to dispatch these lenses for the next day surgery. So which means unless until they enter the IOL collars, somebody has to collect this records and the paper, they send it to the main stores, they should I make sure these lenses are available. The entire process was taking so much of time. With EMR, I can just look into my IO, uh, the list of surgeries, I can open up the record, see what is the IOL power calculation and choose the lens power and enter them into a system called IOL request form and choose the lenses. You can also go much more like what formula was used, any specific other uh, accessories you need for the surgery and dispose them. Imagine if I have put it at abnormal power, it can automatically alert you, tells you this lenses are not available, you need to check with the stores and make them available. The next comes is your equipments. When you have so many equipments, unless until they are not integrated into the system that the purpose of making it paperless doesn't work. So here all the equipments are integrated and we push all these reports into the EMS so that it could be accessed from anywhere. So this is like you like keeping an attachment to the patient record. You can have the topography attachments or ultrasounds or OCT, FFA reports, anything. All of them can go into the record and you can access them. If it is a lab results, we can even the lab blood test automatically goes into the system and there is no, there is a blood analyzer and all the results gets entered into it. There is no, no there is an automatic analyzer process where they get into the system and you can look into it. This, this components may not be useful in a small hospitals, but in the large hospitals where they do basic blood profiles and investigations before surgery. And also you can see uh, photographs also could be attached to the patient so that we know when the patient walks in we can identify who is it. And also like any slit lamp photographs, all that could be attached and it, it is compiled with the file so you can access them anytime if you are going for a presentation, you can pull them up in no time and you can use it. So the advantages are patient record is available immediately, you can use for teleconsultation, we can have a lot of alerts as we see uh, as I showed, the multiple alerts which can help you improve the quality of care and a report engine which helps in for data analysis. So why do we do all this? Finally at the end we want to look into various outcomes, look at the quality and all that. And we also have, as I said in case of research institution, how do we identify a patient who is uh, fit for a particular study. So we can generate some kind of a, uh, alert into the system. So this patient is uh, uh, to be used for a diabetic retinopathy genetic study. So the patient fulfills all the criteria, the system automatically sends an alert. We can even send this alert and SMS to the principal investigator saying that this patient is waiting in this room. They can come, ask the patient, take a concern and then go ahead with uh, 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 improving into the study. The most, the most important thing is with an SMS is to improve your practice, we can send them automatic alerts to the patient that you have an appointment tomorrow and just remind them about the alerts. All those things help. We can go one more step further. 
improve the compliance to treatment, which is very, very important. We give a patient and the patient doesn't come back for a next visit, like adaptive retinopathy, the patient doesn't come back a year, he may go into progression of retinopathy and may lose sight. But we can send an automatic alert. So based on your plan of care, where you have advised uh, written to the TMDK after six months, the system automatically can send an SMS uh, one month before saying that please fix an appointment or just a demand. So the patient feels very happy that the doctor has sent me a reminder to come back to the clinic and 90% of them with this process comes back to your clinic and that will improve your uh, uh, revenue and also uh, improve the compliance to the treatment. We can do it for amblyopia treatment, send an alert to the mothers, tell them that there is uh, you have to patch this week on the right side for two hours. So the reminder for them. So we can use for various ways in which how this could be done. And finally, as I said, into the data mining, we can have a lot of things <coughs> which can be done. Like I want to query a patient with keratoconus, I just put a query and I can get all these patients whom have, uh, I want for a keratoconus. And I can also pick up these files. I put a query, any astigmatism more than minus 3 and if there is a diagnosis of keratoconus to pick it up. And it picked up and I can open up the file and see yes, if correctly identified based on my query. And this could be used transport it to the Excel file and you can send it to your biostatistician for various analysis and your abstract could be ready within no time. So if you have to come for a conference unless until I submit an abstract, it's not possible. So I decide to come 10 days before the abstract date is over and if I have to do a study, if it is a paper record, it's impossible. And this with EMR makes things much, much, much faster. So we want to look into our LASIK results or a cataract results. So the entire data of one year has been just within two minutes, the entire data is uh, uh, fetched, send it to a uh, biostatistician and he takes his time to generate all your graphs and you can use it for various analysis. Okay, so coming back, I just combined my second talk also on how to implement EMR and what are the challenges. So some of them are when you want to go into a new EMR, so we need to see how good is the prop. Is it has good HMS modules, good billing modules, good transcription modules, tra medical transcription and all that. There are huge amount of companies available. So one need to be very careful looking into them whether it fulfills all your criteria. Ideally is look at a working demonstration like go visit a clinic where they have already implemented or look at internet based information or the demos then go and visit the clinic see is it really working and then choose your shortlist it and then go into the system and we also need to look at good graphics drawing modules integration with equipment and also try and see if we can minimize all these duplication of documentation like as i said in optical stores so if a patient goes back there, somebody has to re-enter all the prescription, it's a waste of time. So if we have good integration, all that would be completely uh, shortened. And uh, the perfect software for a package is very, very difficult. If it is a small institution, developing it is also very difficult. So we have to compromise on it. So There's a small changeover. So difficult to suit all your needs. Best is then you have to go ahead with something like developing it, which is, which, which is very, very costly and uh, you'll have challenges. But if it is a big institution who can really work with a uh, good software company, then you can really come out with a system which could be universally adapted and taken care. So when you look at EMR, the big challenges, we need to have consider it as a big project and implementation. So you have a good project manager, a champion user, a doctor who knows both the process will be the best bridge between the implementation. And the champion users, and if you have multiple departments, you have to have at least one champion user in each department who can help you in creating templates and all that. Because some of the favorites has to be done one time. Unless it is done, you can't use them. And detail uh, orientation is very important to all the users. And identify major components like network, infrastructure, hardware, like desktop, laptop, tablets, software setup and training, Customize the creation of templates, as I said. Integration of all the systems like HMS, optical scheduling, interfacing with equipments, and the most most important is training. If you don't train your staff, untrained staff is a big disaster in implementation. There are so many implementations that failed because the training was very really poor. So options for deployment as we go in a stepwise manner. Better not to jump into the well and then try out how to swim. Go in a phased manner, learn step by step. So you can start with 5% implementation at the EMR and the first few days, increase it to 10, 20, and make it. Depending on how your practice is, 
you can have a days where the OPD is light, you can increase the amount of EMR initially like 60% of that day, 40% of return on the paper file in the first one week or two and then make it uh, increase it in a stepwise manner, you achieve it 100%. You can do it within a one month or you can take three or four months depending on how big is your practice. And with there are various types of implementation depending on how you want. We have multiple centers, best is to go something like a cloud-based system where the entire thing is on the internet and you can access it based on good network, you can access them from anywhere. So this is the uh, best way. So it's all web-based modules are, so the, the platform on which the, the software was should be developed is something that supports the web-based. So you can access from any center, from anywhere. If it is a client server base, it is linked only to that particular uh, uh, place. So then again you should have other platform to link into the web page that take it up. So when we look at, when you have the infrastructure is very important, you should have good security because if you are having the internet also connected into your system, there should be good firewall and good antivirus systems because you are, uh, you are connecting all your equipments into it, your uh, in, uh, investigation equipments with a huge amount of data and there is a virus then you have large amount of data get messed up. As I said, if it is a web-based system, you need to have a dedicated uh, land, uh, internet connectivity between the centers. <coughs> so like we have a, our center uh, at Shankanetra, I mean in Chennai, acts as a web. Uh, uh, the center and all the other centers are linked with the dedicated internet lines that makes the connectivity available for, for to the main center any time. But there are challenges again with internet connectivity. So we need to look and see how to have. So whenever there is a challenge, ideally what we did is, if we have a, two servers, like two providers, like we take one from the Airtel and other from BSNL. So we, the chance that both of them fail will be much lesser. So at least we make sure 98, 99% the connectivity is there. There's one, maybe drop by 1%. So if there is a drop in one, we can switch over to the other one. So these are some things which when you have multiple centers we need to look at. And we, the most important thing is we need to have a backup. A excellent backup should be done. Your server should be backed up with a, uh, other server where you uh, back up your data every 15 minutes and also to do a log backups or uh, uh, mirror your backup simultaneously or once in a week you should do a tape backup. So these are various basic guidelines for any IT implementations. And as I said, the success was, uh, good training was one of the successful. So we need to have a hands-on training to all the users. We can also have something like a web-based training where we have the training modules all put into the system. They take up the patients and go through it. So the videos, what you see with the audio incorporated, one can use a web-based training also. And most important thing is when you have a software, you need to look at, there are some regulations, like various uh, uh, regulation systems are there, we need to look at the software as fulfills all your regulatory items. There are various things like HL7 uh, and uh, DICOM imaging and so many uh, re regulatory guidance are there for because you are looking at future how you have to go. Then the most important challenge is how do you handle your old files. So initially as I said, you can keep them all as a paper file and the rest and the new patients you can do in EMR. Over a period of time, the new patients proportion will increase and the paper files will start reducing them. At that time, you can choose something to scan of your old files and the scanned copy would be available into the system and you can continue them in EMR. So the previous record would be in the scan format and the, the, uh, the current visit details all will be the data which is in the electronic format. So the challenges are, we have financial challenges, challenges in the development, training, implementation is a combination of all of them and real time, safety, security, privacy and performance. So the thumb rules in implementation, identify the champion user, the phase implementation, option to convert to paper file when there is a problem, good attractive interfacing which makes it simple, constant monitoring and help this makes EMR the best. Uh, easy to implement and you will have a success in, it, in implementation of EMR. And uh, with this I stop here and I will take up, uh, we will try to complete all the talks and then we we'll take up, uh, we will have uh, almost at least 20 minutes to discuss on the challenges and uh, various issues we have.